Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Suzanne, and I'm a horticulturist here at Rogers Gardens, and I'd like to welcome you to What to Do in Your Garden for October. Sarah's going to be joining me in just a moment. Um, we're going to be doing these uh, live um, What to Do in Your Gardens the first Saturday of each month, and then two weeks after this, we'll be doing another follow-up kind of a seasonal thing, and... Um, I can't remember. I think it's fall planting is the next one in two weeks. Yeah. And here is my friend, the lovely Sarah. She's going to be joining me. Um, October is a great month. Um, it can be a little bit rocky because of the weather. But um, before Sarah and I start, we're actually going to bring a special surprise guest up here, and that is James Maxwell, who is on our team here. Woo James. If you, uh, if you know James, he is our absolute native plant specialist, and so he's going to just talk real quickly about native plants. You need to go in the middle here, James. Oh, I'm sorry, the video. Sorry. This is live, James. This is live. So I'll be really fast. As Susanna says, I'm one of the uh, team members here at Rogers Gardens. I've been here off and on for about 11 years, I believe. Uh, and my specialty is uh, native plants. Uh, it's, it's always been native plants before I came to the States. I was big into native plants in the UK. And when I moved over here, I really got into our local chaparral uh, plant community. So anyway, we're going into October. October is the premium time for, for purchasing natives and introducing them into the garden. Uh, just before we get some, uh, some natural rainfall, Fingers Everybody's crossed. fingers crossed. Do you have a microphone? Oh, I don't. Hold on. I'm going to talk really, really. Oh, here we go. All right. Thank you. There you go. There we go. You got it, James? You got to put it up on top of you. There we go. Okay, James. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so hopefully we'll be going into some cooler weather and hopefully we'll be getting some rainfall. and. And the key time is to get our native plants in before that time or kind of around that time um, when it cools off and uh, basically when we when the ground moistens up and that really triggers that triggers our native plant community to start coming into its own it comes out of its uh, its summer slumber its summer dormant time so we're, we're going into our premium uh, native native plant uh, planting time uh, I, I, of course, because I've only got five minutes, I can't rabbit on forever about various plants. So I'll just quickly give you a, a fast introduction. So why plant natives? Well, unfortunately, over, over the last half a century to a century, we've lost a lot of our local native habitat through development, uh, you know, through housing and what have you. So it's, it's, I think it's our job to put that back into our gardens. You know, whether it's just a, whether it's a couple of native plants or whether it's a whole native garden, it really makes a difference because it helps our local uh, fauna, birds and butterflies, uh, to a certain degree rely on these little satellite uh, um, habitats we have in our gardens. So it's obviously beneficial for that also. Also, it's beneficial for... Um, uh, uh, saving water because obviously native plants once established don't require a lot of water maintenance and so on so that's another huge factor uh, uh, for the for the argument to plant natives and the other the other factor is they're extremely gorgeous they're extremely beautiful they're very diverse California has one of the most diverse um, flora palettes uh, in, in, in the world it's it's so diverse uh, from the, from Baja all the way up to Northern California, it's an extreme, uh, extremely diverse uh, habitat. So uh, we've actually got one of our first big shipments of our of our native uh, planting season here that came in yesterday, and I've got a small selection here. The majority of it is down the side of the walkway here on the right hand side. Uh, bladder pod is one which I pulled just because it's starting to flower. Uh, we've got the Matilia hot poppies, um, which are famous for their giant fried egg type flower. So if you uh, plant them now, the roots are going to get established and next late spring through sort of summer you'll have the flowers. Thank you, Susanna. And then um, Manzanita, Engelman, just a small selection of what we have. So after the seminar today, have a look around, see what we have. Um, the bird and butterfly garden we have over here, that's kind of... 
it's at the tail end, tail end of its uh, of, of looking its best at the moment. So in the next two, three weeks, probably in about three weeks, I'm going to be doing some native planting throughout uh, that, that habitat garden over there. So that was about it really. I just wanted to give you a very fast introduction to uh, incorporating natives uh, into the garden. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? I, well, Susanna and Sarah will touch okay. upon that, yeah, what, yeah, for sure. I'm sorry, what was the name of that poppy again? They, they call it the Matilia hot poppy. Ro, yeah, ro, yeah, ro, Romnia culteriae is the botanical name, but it's it's famous for being the largest flower in um, in uh, California's uh, uh, fl uh, uh, fl uh, flower database. So it's it's quite. I think get about the size of my hand. Yeah, I've always yeah. called it fried egg, but I right, yeah, it with the that's another yeah, yeah common name. Yeah, yeah. And that was about Perfect. it, yeah. Thank yeah. You, James. Okay. Hey, bro. Oh, thank you, James. You've got a question there in the audience. What's the name of the one that's flowering yellow again? The bladder pod. They call, they call, they call, the one flowering with the yellow flower is the bladder pod. It's a common name. I can never remember this. It's curl. Per, what is it? Peritoma. 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 There we go. Arborea. Tree. Tree leg. Thank you, James. Everybody. Yay. James is the best, and if you have any native plant questions, you can always chase him down here. Okay, so with that being said, um, this weekend, as you can tell, first weekend of October, and we can expect the Santa Ana winds. Um, this is really common, and so that's why most of us here in Southern California, as much as a lot of places are getting cooler, and this is that really optimal time to start hunkering down for cooler season uh, planting, we have to think about the Santa Ana winds and we have to hydrate before they get here. So if you're watching, um, if you're listening, everyone please get ready because they are coming this week, if not today, like tomorrow. And um, getting ahead of the Santa Anas is always the most important thing. And as we move into cooler weather, the one thing that you want to do is water the same. So as we've said a million times, you water deeply less often, but now as we go into the cooler weather, you're gonna water just as deeply, but a little less often. So if you're watering two or three times a week now, you can cut it back to two. And then basically in the winter, you're just gonna, you know, if the weather's staying super cool and we have rain, um, you're just gonna water super, super deeply once, maybe twice a week, depending on where you are. So that's a, a good thing to remember as we're slowly, hopefully sliding into cooler weather. Um, I'm going to have Sarah talk about vegetables right now. She's our little edible expert here. <laughs> so um, this is the time of year when you want to start getting all of your beds prepped for all your fall vegetable planting. So fall vegetable planting, I always say, is the prettiest garden for the vegetable garden. I feel like uh, my spring garden is the most exciting with all the fruits and stuff that you're getting. Uh, tomatoes and eggplants and peppers and those are very showy kind of fruits. But uh, my fall veggie garden is gorgeous. It's like so Instagram worthy every single year um, because it's such pretty plants uh, and I just think it looks so nice. So it's it's kind of, I think a lot of people kind of go, oh, fall veggies and nobody are really excited about it. The same Ooh, way people brassicas are, are so good. <laughs> uh, about like tomatoes and stuff. But yeah, it's such a pretty, pretty time. Um, I usually try to get my stuff in about mid-October, uh, so I'm still pulling out a couple of my peppers and a couple of, I have like one tomato left and a couple of peppers and stuff that are kind of straggling along, um, but I'm going to get everything pulled out and prepare my beds. Uh, like we always talk about, the things we're always trying to make sure everybody's really, really doing. Uh, and it's not the exciting part, but it's how to water and how to get your soil ready. It's yeah, get, so important, get the soil right? ready. Uh, I always tell people plants are so much like people. So if you think about, you know, a great looking person is eating well and they're drinking lots of water and they're exercising. So it's the same thing with your garden. You want to make sure your soil's healthy. Uh, you want to make sure you're watering correctly. So getting those beds your prepped. Your mic is cutting out. I think we will be oh. away. Okay. okay, hold on. Let me see um, if I can adjust you. Just. I think that's it. I think there's something else. Okay, Probably. hold on. I'll Let's hold see it. if. Oh, let me see if I can. On my hat? Does that help? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what if I just hold it? It's it's something it's more than that. But uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'll scream.
scream. Uh, so really what you want to do at this time of year is you want to get all of your beds prepped for everything. You want to make sure that you're uh, getting all your stuff out, that you're adding all your good soil, you're adding that, uh, the worm castings. We'll just share. We'll just okay, we'll just share. I'll just hold it like this. How about that? Okay, uh, so uh, you're, you're prepping everything. Worm castings, uh, good compost, uh, getting that all mixed up. Worm castings is the best. Uh, fancy word for worm poop. <laughs> so uh, it's from earthworm poop. So um, what's really nice about that is it adds an enzyme up into the plant so it makes the plants, uh, it's almost like a natural systemic. So it makes the plants uh, more resilient towards things like white fly and, and aphids, aphids yeah. and mealybugs and all those kind of things. So it's a really, really great thing to add into your soil. Uh, the Malibu compost here, this is my all time favorite. Um, Starts. Oh, this is Sorry. a seed starter. But the Malibu c makes a compost. Uh, it has the little cow on it. There you go. Uh, try to lift that one, Suzanne. Let's see that upper body strength. <laughs> Come on. Good <laughs> job. Really <laughs> Malibu compost is the best. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, we talk about it all the time, yeah. but it's, it's such a great soil amendment. It's super, super concentrated. So sometimes people get a little bit shocked at the cost of it. It's kind of spendy, but it's worth it, especially for your edibles. I mean, I would say if you're growing vegetables, this is your perfect soil additive because it is so good. And so it's filled with worm castings as well, but it's also just a great thing. And then if you're growing your vegetables in pots or containers, we have the Malibu potting soil. The Malibu potting soil is fantastic too. Is. Um, so anything that you do in containers, you don't have to have, you know, land and garden space to do vegetables. Uh, you can do all this stuff in containers as well. And I do, I say I probably do about 25% of my veggies in pots, the rest all go in the ground. Um, but this is a time when you're starting to put in all of your brassicas, all of your green leafy things. Um, one thing that I wanna show everybody, and I think everybody thinks about cilantro as being a summertime thing, but really it's a cooler season uh, herb. This is a really great thing to grow now. Uh, when you try to grow cilantro when it's really, really hot, it starts to bolt and flower um, and it just and doesn't last coriander. as long yeah then yeah <laughs> then you get coriander if you want to harvest that but this is a really great time to get your cilantro on the ground um, it's really nice when they come in these six packs like this because it's a really good price point uh, as well so whenever we have these I show everybody look we have it in six packs because this is such a great deal um, all the brassicas and stuff that you want to start doing, that's going to be things like uh, your cauliflower, your um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Um, I love the kales. I grabbed some of my kales. I love this. This one is so pretty. Also, too, it's, they're so pretty. It's so funny. This is a, a white kale, but when this really gets big, uh, it's really, really white and beautiful on the inside. So it's a really, really beautiful looking plant. Um, and I love the lacinato. This is what they call the dinosaur kale. This is a much more tender kale. Uh, so great for doing with salads and stuff if you're not cooking it, if you're just, you know, massaging the oil into it and kind of breaking it down a it's little bit. It's pretty in the garden. It looks like little trees. Yeah. It, yeah. Gets, it gets very tall. It's really beautiful. And as we go on, even towards the end of October, we're going to get even more varieties of this. So different things come in, different really beautiful varieties of it. Um, I love growing Swiss char and I love when we get the Swiss char, the rainbow in because all different colors, super, super super gorgeous. Um, you can eat the stems, you get the reds, you get the yellows, you get the whites in here. Um, yeah, this is a year round plant for sure. We're, we're pretty mild, so we can do certain things year round here. Um, my one time, like favorite, favorite thing, if you're only going to do one thing, I love leeks. Leeks are my favorite. They're so good. I love making soups and stuff with them. I'm constantly trying all the different kinds of leeks. Long, you're not a leek fan. I'm a leek fan. Oh, I love I just, them. Uh, I, I haven't grown them in like it's it's a it's a long game with leeks. But what I like about leeks is that they're so small, so they take up a very small footprint in your garden. So it's a really great back planting. Uh, it's a really great border planting because they don't take up a lot of space. Um, so leeks, I love because I I do all kind. You haven't had my leek soup, that's why. <laughs> This year, I'm going to convert her. Um, so, uh, but the American flag, these are the nice, big, chunky ones. So get these in the ground now. And like I said, it's so great because it doesn't take up much space. Uh, and they're so tender. These ones are really tender and really nice. And they're great sauteed. They're great in soups. Uh, I make them um, 
just even like regularly sauteed. But the one thing that you also want to keep in mind with all of this beautiful green, leafy, gorgeous things is what are we going to start getting? Sulfur moss. Sulfur moss, yeah. So that you're going to start seeing all the little holes and everything. And you're thinking, what is that? Those really cute little white yeah. butterflies that you have in your garden. They're not your friend, no. but you do have a good friend. And BT. it's BT. This is really kind of a, I, I tend to not be a preventative sprayer, meaning I don't like pre-spray for things that could potentially happen. Uh, a lot of times I feel like you're just wasting product that way. Um, and if you don't have a prob problem, why spray for it? With the exception of pre-spraying BT, uh, I do that whenever I'm planting this kind of stuff because by the time you realize it's a problem, it's a huge problem. It happens very, very quickly. Um, and they're very, very hard to see. So people will often bring in a leaf and it has holes all over it and they're saying, but I don't see anything. They move very, very quickly. So the leaf that you're picking, they're not on that. They're on a different leaf and they're starting that new stuff. So they are very hard to find. Vegetables. Yeah, they get down inside things. They're very, very hard to see. So I do preventative spray with this. Uh, if I know I have a problem, I do this every seven to 10 days. Um, if I'm preventatively spraying, I do it about once a week or every other week. Uh, so I'm not spraying it that often, uh, but it really, really helps. In the years that I get lazy and I don't do it, that's when now my really beautiful cabbage looks horrible. And I t keep telling everybody in my family like, okay, I know it has holes in it, but that means that it's okay and it's good because we know it's organic. <laughs> so I always try to convince my daughter, it's okay to see holes in the cabbage and she gets freaked out and she picks it all. We have a question. So this is BT spray. So Monterey uh, makes it and you'll see on there it's BT and it's a bacteria that the caterpillars ingest uh, and it's bactylophysis. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think it's I think it's Bacillus thurnbergia. Uh, yeah. Gosh, Ron. Thuringiensis. Back to the Thuringiensis. If I say it fast with a smile, everybody believes me. Um, but BT. BT spray. And it says literally on there, BT, ready to use. You can buy the concentrate. Uh, I am a, because I have so much garden, I do pump spraying. I find it's much easier than standing there going, spray, 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 spray. After a while, my hand hurts. So having a pump sprayer is definitely help, uh, helpful. But this is a great time to get all this stuff established. We'll get more and more and more in as the season gets a little bit later. Um, also peas. So this is when you're transitioning from your cucumbers and beans. If you have trellising in your yard, uh, you're going into pea season, which is my favorite. Uh, I absolutely love these. Um, I There's all kinds of really beautiful varieties of these. Um, there's even a really pretty one that's come out um, in the last couple of years that the flower is even pretty. Looks like a sweet pea flower, but makes an edible pea. Uh, it's got a French name. We don't have that uh, right now at the moment, but we will get it. Yeah. And then starting seeds. Don't forget seeds are really, really easy, especially for things like carrots. Um, I love doing lettuce, carrots, arugula, lettuce, arugula, um, spinach. radishes, spinach. Yeah. Uh, this is a great time to start that stuff from seed as well. I'm not, I'm not a seed purist. I know there are people out there that are like that. I do a lot of starts like this, but there's certain things, uh, that you just can get really great varieties and especially your stuff that you grow in the ground. There's a root vegetable, much better to start from seed, um, than start from a six pack, uh, cause the shape will be much prettier. You know, when you pull, you see those pictures of the carrots that people pull out and they're, they look like people and there's like all kinds of arms and they're curly and strange. That's probably cause they started them. Um, from a six pack instead of starting them from seed. If you start them from seed, they're much straighter and prettier. Um, you can get really, really great varieties that way too. Uh, so starting those from seed, don't be afraid. It's very, very easy to start things from seed. It is. Yeah. I think people okay. are afraid of that. I'm gonna, it, yeah. and you didn't even talk about our favorite tatsoi there. So oh, I'm no, like, I, I keep staring at it. So this is, this is Sarah and I's kind of like our favorite little vegetable because one, it's delicious, but two, it is adorable in your garden. It's a tatsoi, it's like a bronze tatsoi, and it can be like a little bedding plant, and you can, of course, nibble on it. There's so many things. I was actually thinking about leeks, and I thought, well, I can throw some in among my the rest of my garden, and some of this tatsoi is also, it's just really cute. You can put it in pots with your arrangements and things like that. It's, it's really uh, just a beautiful, delicious vegetable. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about, um, bedding plants, so annuals and perennials. Um, 
there uh, this is a, such a beautiful time it's my favorite time i'm not a bedding plants kind of person per se like i don't do that but when uh, pansies and violas come in i am just a sucker for them i buy them every year i also love marigolds they there's just like the bigger the taller i love them so much and i will just buy a whole flat of these and throw them in one area and just Anyway, so you can do as the weather starts to cool, and it really depends on where you are. If you're here at the coast, you can start them a little bit earlier. As you move, move further inland, you wanna wait a little bit because much like some of these things like the lettuces will um, bolt, these plants will die very quickly if it's too warm. And these here, these are the ornamental cabbages and kales. Everybody loves these. They are great to plant, but if it's too hot, when you plant them, they will turn into a big cone bolt and you'll have to start over so be patient with your ornamental cabbage and kale know your weather if you want to start them just wait until it's cool in the evenings really really cool in the evening and that, that kind of day where it starts really cold in the morning gets a little bit warm but then gets really cold really quickly you can put those in then um, just hang off a bit we just started getting the ornamental cabbages and kales, um, I think this week. Yeah. And um, there'll be so many colors and so many different varieties. Um, just be patient if you're gonna plant them. They are gorgeous. The pansies and the violas, look at this, this little Halloween mix. Is this not amazing? I mean, <laughs> you put this in a couple of leeks and <laughs> and some flowers in a in a little bowl and you've got a beautiful beautiful seasonal arrangement but um people are also getting into the dusty millers because these transition well into later on so you can kind of mix your cabbages your dusty millers and your um, pansies here of course we've got cyclamens again just like those ornamental cabbages and kales make sure you know your weather you can plant these in the morning sun right now or shade they'll do fine but if you put them in full sun um, when it's really really hot they're not going to be happy so just wait until they can be in a consistently moist uh, soil bed and not too much direct sun we have the flower of the month which we haven't really announced yet i don't think um but it is mums and so if anybody knows about our flower of the month program this is starting on monday i believe these are mums oh the flower of the month so this um in september our flower of the month was salvias and so any salvia in this entire store i think until monday correct you can buy two get one free so today too so even from four inch up to five gallon buy two get one free and that's going to be the same for the mums starting on monday so amazing right and look at these these remind me of my childhood did anyone else go to Lucky Markets when they were little? And the entire front area smelled like stock. Stock is such a beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful bedding plant. It's, it's so cute. It's very romantic. It's very shabby chic and pretty. So love these. Um, the one other thing I wanted to mention while James was here uh, is Mimulus. Mimulus is a perennial native plant and um these are so great they're almost like a little octopus in your garden they grow they bloom they look a little weird for a while then they start blooming again <laughs> but these are a great little filler plant and they're also called monkey flowers so um when you're planting your things as sarah mentioned just put some good soil in we've got in the front there we've got our garner and bloom planting mix and potting soil and since um since we're kind of talking about this, uh, it, I don't think a day goes by where people don't say, I don't know what to plant my plants in. So if you're putting it in the ground, it's planting mix. If you're putting it in a pot, it's potting soil. So it's pretty easy that way. And although I put some, I think it's cactus, citrus, palm mix down there, that's a really good thing if your soil is super heavy and you want to get good drainage. You can use it for anything. It doesn't have to be for palms and succulents and citrus. It just has a lot of good pumice and things in it to help your soil drain. So if you know your soil is super heavy, grab a bag of that and that's going to help uh, you know, get the water away from your plant's roots. 
that's planting annuals and perennials here very quickly. And now I want to have Sarah do her last bit on this for the um, bulbs. bulbs. So this is the time to grab your bulbs. It's a little too early to plant your bulbs, but this is the time when you want to go in and get the best ones and get the nicest ones, the plumpest ones, the prettiest colors. Uh, things, things are already um, selling out. It's kind of amazing. I even myself wanted to um, get some of those giant alliums. There was a really beautiful one and I went to go grab some and there were two left and one was rotten. And I was like, dang it, man, even I like, so um, this one is one that uh, Ron turned me on to a couple of years ago. Um, I love this allium. This is a different type of giant allium. This is a California native one too, which is really, really beautiful. Um, they are not, the flower head is big, but the stalk is short on these. And I, I planted for the first year and then when they came up, I went, wow, those are great. I need more. <laughs> and so uh, last year I planted even more and I'm realizing I still kind of want some more. So uh, these ones are going home with me, but we do have a good supply of this still. Uh, we still have a lot of really beautiful um, bulbs and stuff, but a lot of people are like, well, it's not really time to plant it, so I don't want to buy them yet. But buy them, um, store them in a paper bag, take them out of these plastic bags bags, store them in a paper bag, uh, keep your card so you remember what it is, um, and then store them away. And when you're doing things like tulips, uh, this is a good time to buy these now because you want to refrigerate them. So if you think about where tulips do so well, places like Holland, back east, uh, they get the freezes. We don't get that. So these need to be refrigerated to go to trick them into a dormancy time um, so you can plant these. Uh, if you look well if you look a lot of times they say like eight or six weeks but i think even longer is is okay so it's okay to put them in now um and you want to put these in your refrigerator uh in a paper bag not next to bananas or apples um when you think about how you know we ripen avocados we put an avocado in the bag with an, a banana or an apple because of the gas that they release as they're ripening it will rot your bulbs uh so make sure that you have them in a crisper away from those things um and in a in not in the plastic you want to keep them in a paper bag i, I just want to really quickly i love these i want to tell you these are my personal favorite bulbs yeah. i'll speak really loud okay <laughs> so these are leucogym a lot of times people come in and they want to have snowdrops mm -hmm. uh, they uh, sorry lilies of the valley they don't grow here no no matter who sells them no matter what you see or read they don't grow here and so you're just wasting your money so you want to buy leucogym these will go in your garden I think they're cuter than Lily of the Valley because they have a little green dot on them and they will naturalize right. in your garden. So they'll get bigger and bigger. One investment gets bigger. Yeah, so naturalizing is that they're gonna come back year after year after year without you having to dig them up or do anything to them. Um, the things with like tulips, uh, even I find with ranunculus, I can get my ranuncula foliage to come back the next year, but I don't really get a lot of flowers on my ranunculus the next year. Um, ranunculus are gorgeous though, and these are the ones that I really feel are worth the investment of buying and planting every single year. Um, when you look at ranunculus, the thing that I want everybody to be aware of, when you look at a bulb, it's pretty obvious, a true bulb, which way is the bottom and which way is the top. Um, but when it comes to things like ranunculus, also when we get into dahlia time, um, they're different. They look like a little chunk of bananas. <laughs> so you want to make sure that the tips, all the little individual tips are pointing down and you want to make sure uh, that the top, which is the little round eye, is what's pointing up. Um, the other thing that's super, super important is the depth of how you plant all of your bulbs. Everything has a different need and a different depth. And there is a chart on the back um, and making sure that you actually really pay attention to that. So, um, you know, you can either get a dabber, which is something that you poke in the ground that has the lines on it for one inch, two inch, three inch, or just use a ruler. Um, I'm really bad at eyeballing and I find that I'll go through and I'll start to eyeball and I think, you know, I should probably measure this and I measure it and I'm always shorter than it should be. So make sure that you really pay attention to that. That's super important. Um, but things that in being aware of the things that need to be chilled and the things that don't need to be chilled and also knowing the things that are going to come back and the things that are not going to come back. So you don't feel like you failed because there's not, not everything is going to come back year after year. Uh, Freesias is another one that naturalizes very, very well. They smell fantastic. They come in all different colors. I think they smell like Fruit Loops. I she doesn't believe. Uh, she's. 
<laughs> outside. I don't like them as cut flowers inside, but they are funny because when you grow them outside, they are the floppiest things. And they so are, yeah. Put them in a place where you can see them, even if they're kind of flopping around. Yeah, but, but they, they do perfume your garden. They so smell well. like Fruit Loops or like uh, Fruity Pebbles. I don't know. I have a weird nose, I guess. But the thing that I want to show you too is bone meal. Uh, bone meal and the rose and flower mix. When I'm first planting a bulb, I use uh, a handful of the bone meal in the holes. Um, and then as they're going, then I switch to my rose and flower mix. Um, if you don't want to invest in two things, you can go ahead and use this. But I feel that the bone meal to start is the best. And this is great to keep fertilizing as they go along. Um, what you're really looking for is this middle number. And this has a really nice high middle number, but you want to make sure that it's got that nice big high middle number. So it's a great time for bulbs. Buy your bulbs now so that way you have first pick of the things you want. The last one I want to show you, look how gorgeous these are. Paper whites. So paper whites are already in and these are the ones that you force inside. These are huge. We have the biggest, most beautiful paper white bulbs we ever. Uh, it's really, really impressive. Back in the day, I worked at Smith & Hawken when that was still around and they were really famous for forcing bulbs and they always had the most big, beautiful bulbs. When they went away, it got really sad because you couldn't find the nice big paper white bulbs anymore and we have them so it's very very exciting you get multiple stems off of these uh, forcing bulbs is very very simple we have lots of great videos about it essentially all you need is a container that will hold water and rocks or pebbles or marbles or anything that you can yeah or soil uh, that you can sit them on top of and you just sit them on top of whatever that is I do all different kinds of things shells all kinds of stuff and you let the water graze the bottom of the bulb and you just keep it wet and you do this inside and this is a great thing uh, for Christmas time for that, me it's replaced that's, poinsettias that's the thing yeah that, that cannot be impressed upon you enough mm -hmm. right now buy your bulbs now buy yes now. I know we're talking Put Christmas them in a but bag, mm -hmm. set them aside mm -hmm. and then when the holidays you know do you start getting invitations start planting them up they take four to six weeks to flower so you can kind of think in your head I'm going to be invited to probably five Christmas gatherings and um, the thing is is that if you start these you'll have them setting somewhere in a little pot or a little cute gift thing and you can say oh I'm going to you know Sarah's house for leek soup and <laughs> and um, I'm gonna bring her I'm gonna bring her paper whites because I prep them but if I don't if I don't think ahead then I can't do it. So a lot of times people will come and they'll, it'll be the season already and we'll be sold out of paper whites. And this happens, or maybe we're in between shipments or something, so plan ahead. I'm really into planning ahead and these are such a great gift to put into one of our little like rustic earthen pots. They're so inexpensive, you just throw some, yeah, and we have kits and everything. So it is like the best hostess gift, even if they're not blooming yet, you know they'll be blooming within a week or two and then suddenly you'll get a call oh my gosh my paper whites are blooming they're so wonderful this has happened multiple times so it's one of my favorites so um so that's about it i i do want to say a little bit about pruning your trees are probably going to start losing leaves soon so start finding your pruners start sharpening them get ready because in november we're really going to talk a lot about pruning although you might want to start now do we have any questions Oh, Taylor has a question. Yeah, we have uh, two uh, bulb questions from our live uh, stream here. And okay. the first one has to do with um, whether or not they're perennials that come back year after year and what the timing is. Okay, so, so if they, you plant it, how long does it take to... They want to know which ones are perennials and which ones are annuals. Yeah. So th they're, they're annuals because of the fact that we don't get the cold weather that they need. And that's going to be your things like especially your tulips. I've never gotten a tulip to come back for me the next year. It's just far too hot. Um, I also find that ranunculus. They'll, they'll rot. I mean, yeah. Because we water year round mm -hmm. here, leaving a lot of tubers and, and bulbs and stuff like that in the ground, we're going to water too much. They'll rot. Yeah. So ranunculus don't Adalias. really come up for me. The things that I do have really good luck with coming up for me every single year, so it is like a perennial, but they're going to die down. You're not going to have foliage on bulbs year round, um, is the alliums. Uh, specifically these type of alliums. Uh, these ones come back really, really nice for me. These are the California native allium. Um, the, um, the 
um, giant snowdrops. These come back for me really, really nicely and reflower and reflower and reflower. And it's funny because I've tucked them around my garden and sometimes I forget, oh yeah, look at those guys coming up. And I'm always shocked by where I put them in. Um, the freesias, the freesias I have pretty good luck with coming back uh, year after year. Um, and irises. Um, and this is a good time if you have irises to thin out your irises, but these come back very well for me. Um, sometimes things like daffodils will come back, depending on the daffodil. I find the smaller the daffodil flower, the more likely they come back. The foliage will always come back for me on most of them. Um, I do not bother to dig up any bulbs and put them in storage or freeze them again or I don't I just don't have time for that I don't know who has time for that but I don't dig up any of my bulbs um, if you go back east a lot of times they'll dig up their bulbs because they have the opposite problem where those bulbs cannot uh, be frozen or through the snow um, but luckily here that's not the problem what it is is that it's they don't get cold enough again for the next year um, or we rot them out uh, as well so most of these will die down uh, well all of them will die down completely um, but those are the varieties that will come back year after year after year and sometimes they just peter out over time so it's something that you kind of treat as like an annual in a way of how you plant them you plant them year after year after year um, but there's a handful that come back really nicely and this my new these giant alliums my new favorite thing I love them so much they're so pretty so yes you have a question yeah no the yellow and orange flowers, I forget the name. The marigolds? She wants to know about the marigolds. Are they, um, I've heard that if you plant them with your vegetables, it kind of detours the bugs. Is that true um, or no? You know, so she wants to know about companion planting with those. People say that it helps and a lot of people, sorry, a lot of people do plant them with their, their uh, vegetables and things like that. Honestly, I think they're beautiful and they smell, uh, they have that aroma, that oiliness to them that will keep maybe rabbits away from eating them. But you would have to plant quite a lot to keep uh, most pests, you know, because most pests can fly and they're going to get in. And so I, I don't want to keep, uh, you know, talking a lot about um, things that aren't quite as effective as going out there and looking at your plants and maybe using some BT or some other, you know, um, pesticides judiciously. You don't want to overdo it with all of your things, but I wouldn't rely on companion planting in our beautiful Southern California weather that is like constantly perfect for everyone to be outside. It's perfect for pests and things like that. It's, they're, they're a beautiful thing to have and they will probably help keep some rabbits away from things but not not necessarily um, out of your vegetables. I believe in companion planting for attracting things but not deterring things. I don't really yeah. find that it works Perfect. all that to, well, right? Yeah. And it's about the oil in the plant and as the plant's growing it's not just releasing oil. It's got to be touched. It's got to be manipulated. It's got to yeah. be crushed. Um, so uh, that, That's like we were talking earlier about planting um, or actually positioning our uh, onions and leeks and things like that uh, near our vegetables to try and keep any bunnies from hopping the fence and getting onto our tables. Yeah. If, there are, if there are onions there, they're less likely to be coming near it, but you have to definitely do a barricade of onions around your you know, garden. So that's a good reason to grow leeks and onions and things like that. Put them around your garden. It, it's not 100% effective, but it can help a little bit. Yeah, we've got one more bulb question on amaryllis specifically. When should they plant them for them to bloom by Christmas? Yeah, we are getting amaryllis and we're not sure we're waiting on that to come in. So it's been, yeah, even our bulbs came in a little bit, these bulbs came in a little bit later than we expected them to. So we're hopefully getting them soon. We're waiting on those. Um, usually about by eight. The end of the month about eight weeks um, to get them to flower for Christmas time. It's always such a gamble. It depends on how much sun you have in your house um, as well. So uh, I'm always like super excited if I just nail it and I get the flowers in time for Christmas. They're always great to have. They are, absolutely, yeah. I truly, paperweights and amaryllis have replaced poinsettias for me. I, I, I'm lucky if I even get one poinsettia. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I just say? <laughs> I'm such a bulb forcer. I, I, I really enjoy it. But um, yeah, 
So you want you want to aim about eight weeks before Christmas for those. Um, some varieties are going to flower earlier than others, um, but those are a great one to force inside. Well, is in soil, you can do them in weed cell vases and all kinds of things. So hopefully we get them soon. We're just still waiting on those. But the second those come in, grab those two, store them for later because the good colors sell out really, really fast. They do. Yeah. They do. Okay. Uh, yes? The Budlea over here. Uh, oh, okay. We're back to the Budlea. Yes? They want to it is a dwarf. I, we don't actually sell the super, super big uh, standard Budlea anymore. Most people want to grow that dwarf in the garden, so it's the Buzz, um, usually the Buzz series. There are a couple other things, microchip. but what? Microchip. microchip and things like that. They are so great for the garden because they stay small. And then after they've bloomed, you just kind of whack them back a little bit, or you can deadhead them delicately, but um, they are such a great plant for a pot, for anything like that. And you've probably seen those um, painted ladies. I see a skipper on there. The monarchs will go there, the Gulf Fritillaries. Right now, we have so many butterflies here at Rogers Gardens, and especially on the salvias up front. But those bud layers, they should be right over there. This is our whole bird and butterfly garden area, and we have um, some over there. So anything else? Oh, one last. I have trouble keeping uh, flowers on the but oh, just um, deadhead them. Deadhead them, cut it back a little bit. You don't have to be as delicate as you can be, but you can just whack that whole thing off. Like, show them like the line of where they can just whack them off. So I would go through yeah. and I deadhead all these ones Yeah, off. you can deadhead them, but it's also, you can just do a good solid whacking of everything and they'll just come right back. They're so good. Usually um, I like to uh, prune them back pretty hard, end of November, December just because sometimes they start looking a little leggy, but they're a great plant to, um, you know, do that late November, December pruning. And so, you can do that and kind of like uh, clean them up a little bit because they, they can get a little scruffy, but that one's obviously really, really pretty. Okay, so I think that's it. We're a little over time. Sorry, everybody, but we were having fun here. If you have any questions and you're here, um, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, Ron has coupons for everyone who's here. You get a 10% off coupon for anything that you buy today. Um, go to rogersgardens.com for shopping needs. Uh, we have our e-com. Taylor, who's doing our camera today. Thank you so much, Taylor. You're awesome. She also does our e-com stuff. So um, we also have Facebook, Instagram. We have Pinterest. So sign up, subscribe, and then you'll find out about all of our events here. Okay, that's it for me and Sarah. Bye. Bye. Leek soup. Leek soup is in my future. I know it.